From earliest times, our ancestors lived in a world that was filled with dangers and the threat of the unknown. They faced many more dangers than we ever did, and that struggle to survive can be seen on the headstones of each and every graveyard in every parish in the land. Here, the combination of architecture, sculpture, landscape, wildlife and poetry tells a story uniquely of their own local history. But unfortunately, many of them are slowly allowing nature to reclaim their dead. Some communities have not allowed that to happen, such as those from Klopuk, who 30 years ago began to do something about it. I suppose it was around 92, like when a few lay farther and a few other men around got together and started to clean it up. So we were kind of carrying it on now, like, you know. Today, as the sun is going down, after a hot day's work elsewhere, the community comes together freely, as they do regularly, to pay respects with their labour and to keep their graveyard and the fragile stones of their ancestors clear of grass and brambles that threaten to overwhelm the area. And the beauty is it's all on a voluntary basis as well. Like there's, we just give our own time and we all enjoy giving our own time, I think. So, you know, that's what makes it all worthwhile. Like, and we we're happy enough doing it voluntary because we want to keep the graveyard and the building fairly good. Well, because we have ancestors here and we, we enjoy coming down every two weeks to meet up with the committee and do our bit there and have a chat and a laugh. And, you know, we're, we're very happy doing that. A lot of the committee here, their fathers and uncles and aunts and everyone belonged to them worked here and kept it and kept it up to this. I'm sure if we can put in a bit and carry it on for another few generations, maybe someone else will look after it in. While they try and control nature in one area of the graveyard, as people of the countryside, they do not forget the other world of wild nature they share their community with, and it too is cared for within the church grounds. In the centre of their graveyard is the ruin of their old church. It too now needs to be looked after, and so they have asked for and received a grant to provide the skills needed to hopefully revitalise their ivy-choked place of worship. Yeah, the project is removing all the ivy here from the old building and probably getting it pointed up and, you know, get it nicely done. I think otherwise the building will actually fall eventually and it would be a shame because it is in good condition when the ivy will be removed. How that will turn out could be asked of Calabon, 40 minutes away on the other side of the county, who also faced an overgrown church, and they too felt something needed to be done about it. You couldn't see the building or the, the, the what remains with ivy, and it's just a mass of ivy. And if you walked in here, you, you, you couldn't actually, you had to get over stones and uh, briars and bushes and everything like that. It got overgrown in years. The ivy was grown, grown wild. Now that's the only way I could describe it. And I thought, will we ever be able to do anything with it? And uh, so I spoke to Catherine Casey, uh, the heritage officer in Leash County Council, who was more than helpful and came down and advised us on the way to go about it and, and what, uh, more so what not to be doing than the, what to be doing. Like for instance, tearing the ivy off the walls and things like that, because unknown to, unknown to me, when you do that, you could be knocking the building down. Oh, it was a daunting task and it was ignorance on my part because the fact of the matter is I never realised what it was until we started to, until we start to attack it. 2014 then we formed a committee and so we literally got together with strimmers and chainsaws and um, 
just cleaned up the whole place and then we got funding from the Heritage Council and also Leash County Council and we begun work on the East Gable up here behind you and um, that was in a very perilous state and so uh, just first thing was removal of ivy and pointing of the of the present stone that was there. Uh, the Monuments Fund gave us a lot of money and it's continuing to do so because when they see an interest in, in a, a project like this they're with a good committee behind it they're willing to they're willing to, to we're inclined to get more money and they are doing that and only for them I mean the truth of the matter is it wouldn't be done and that's it we employed uh, arch archaeologists architects and all the rest of it to send uh, a letter out to all the stonemasons in the area and eventually anyway we got a guy from Kilkenny who who is excellent as you can see by the work that's done on the, on the premises. The commissioned work around the church has taken almost seven years and still has more to go. But all this work has not only uncovered a fine structure under the ivy but also a renewed knowledge and pride in the history of the church that was now turning out to be of some major historical importance. I was amazed about the history of the place. It was unbelievable, like this was one of two towns that was in Leash at the time, and there was about 4,000 people living around here. The town's land here is Kilabin, and um, back in 640 or there thereabouts, St. Aben uh, uh, had a monastery here. He was originally in, um, the, he came from Slaty in near Carlo, uh, where there was a monastery, and he set up a monastery here, and there was a lot of people living all around this area. There's not too many local places can boast of having a, a saint in the, in the, living in the area, like, you know, or starting a monastery. I suppose St. Abin is not, there's not a, a massive amount known about him because it was in 640. A lot of this wouldn't have been written down until the 12th century. So, like, there was thousands of people. If you go back on, on older maps of Leash, there was only two towns in County Leash mentioned. One was Marlborough, which is County uh, Port Leash, and the other was Kilabin. I think you don't really realise about it until you get older. I think age is a great medicine for that. It's, as you get older, you start to really like want to preserve everything around the place. There's stuff around here I would never have seen, and I've only seen them in the last few years because your mind is open to things now and, and you can kind of see a lot more. All the area around the church still needed to be maintained and this was carried out by the local community, giving of their time once again for the benefit of others. All the work here was voluntary. Everybody done it of their own free will. They brought their own strimmers, they brought their own hedge cutters, they brought everything. And uh, we worked away here and it's just a local voluntary group. Very proud of the community, proud of the lads with all the work that they did. They've done a huge amount of work here over the years. And every, you'd see them every time you're passing by, there's always one or two of them in here strimming or cutting or doing something, cleaning up. So it's a great, it's a great community around here. We don't have, uh, we, have uh, we don't have a town, but we have a community and we have a spirit and we have a, a lot of people that are interested in the local area and want to keep it you know, in good, in good nick for the future. And that's, that's really what we're about. Of all the things that I've done in my life, and I've done a lot of things in my life, I, this is the most uh, important thing that I did. And it'll be lovely to know that when I'm gone and all the committee is gone, that this will be here standing for another 150 years until somebody else takes it on and does a little bit more with it. Back in Klapuk, the work on their church has yet to begin. Are they looking forward to it? I am, yeah, looking forward to it. Like, they're talking about two-year projects, so it'll be interesting to see how it'll all look, so please God. And hopefully it'll finish, and hopefully I'll be here when it is finished. Why are we doing it? 
Well, I suppose it's part of our heritage and like our ancestors are all buried here and you know, it's great for the hopefully the generation to come like that the interest will be there for them like to carry it on like, you know. I think time passed, I think there was a great in communities like people, you know, people helped each other and they worked together and you know, there wasn't the, there wasn't the money that there is today and people don't think voluntary and I think that's nice to kind of hold on something like, on that kind of scale. Well, I think we all have to give a little back. I don't know. You, you, you really feel better to be putting a little bit in. You know, it's, it's very easy to say, ah, sure, someone else will do it. But why not give a little hand? Make it easier for everyone. As the shadows grow longer in the dying sun, and the evening's work is coming to an end, one can say for both these volunteer groups, Klopuk and Kalabin, that due to their hard work and community spirit, they will now be able to hand on to their descendants a heritage to see and be proud of. That must be a blessing for both the living and the dead. Oh.